Where did I put this fucking thing? Oh, no, it didn't sink. Why you do this? Hey, fam. Okay, I've got my questions for E3. We're going to be talking about what we thought of E3. I've got my questions. I don't have Ralph my questions. Ralph does not have his questions. I thought so I had my questions. I don't have my questions. He's going to pretty much make up 10 questions. If he doesn't... They were really good questions as well. This is they were shocking fucked. questions. I saw them. This is so annoying. And this... Very homophobic questions. It was very... It was very... It was very, well, very bad taste. inappropriate. Very bad taste. Number one. <clears throat> what were the major differences from this E3 to last year. Well, first of all, Sam was there, and that was a huge problem. I mean, E3 amazing. has always been, people say it's on the decline, but I really feel like E3 hit the absolute rock bottom yeah. when my brother was in attendance, because it really proves that Dallas was There was certainly a in. higher amount of females that were attending once the news got out that I was going to be there. Absolutely not true. If you saw any footage of E3, you see like 85 men to one female. So this is Sam's mm. weird reality. running after me. Sam's weird reality where he actually just doesn't know it's I lost weight though, because I had to run all the time. You did have, you'd lose weight over there because you're fat shit. I would say though, that the fact that there were 15,000 consumers on the floor of E3 was 100% because I wasn't there thing. last year I, I wish I was there everyone like because I, I really expected people to be like oh my god you're such an elitist how dare you say that we shouldn't be able to go to E3 but I find that most people actually think yeah that's shitty like even people who aren't in the industry agree that we shouldn't have consumers at E3 because it really nothing, just rendered a clusterfuck. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with having consumers there. Just have a day yeah, yeah, yeah. for the media. Just let them do what they need to do so they can get the information out. Because the background is E3 used to just be trade people, media people, whatever. For the first time this year, 15,000 consumers were let in the door. They sold tickets to them. And it's wonderful that more people get to experience E3, but it was such a clusterfuck. It was ridiculous. You couldn't even walk. You were just like, Ehh! the whole Honestly, time. Honestly, it was like... Okay, there was a spot between like Xbox and something else. It was just like this packed. It yeah. took five minutes just to like get through. It was just like, oh my Ridiculous. God. And all the fat gamers were just like, Aah! I would hard. never refer to gamers as fat. Okay. Never. That's disgusting. They're just it's weight. Terrible. They're just weight challenged. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're horizontally challenged. I think I actually found my questions. My, my question is what was your biggest surprise during E3? My biggest surprise actually at E3 was the fact that E3 wasn't the big. Like, it wasn't the big thing to look forward to, what to be mean? honest. Wow. The presentations from Xbox and PS4, when I finished them, I was like, oh my God, that was the sickest thing ever. I cannot wait for E3, you know, like yeah, true, thinking true. it was like going to build, build, build. But then you get to E3, you're like, okay, I've seen all this. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, all, I'm, all I'm doing now is getting squished by like, <laughs> you know, heaps of smelly people. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally. It's, it's, I think you get the idea that E3 is actually a show, but E3 isn't a show, funnily enough. E3 is actually press conferences. Like, in the minds of people that, like, get excited about E3, it's actually all the announcements that happen before the show that make E3 really interesting. Yeah. When you're on the floor of the show, it's just a massive mess. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The lines to wait for anything, it's like, well, we didn't actually have to line up, thank God. Yeah, we had bookings. Like, if you're really organized at E3, you get bookings to everything. So you go and just walk up to someone and they get you straight onto something. But if you don't, or if you're not organized or you don't have a big enough channel or whatever else, you basically have to wait in line and it is garbage. It's terrible. Garbage. Some of those people would have easily been waiting two and a half hours, three 100%. hours to play a game for what? Two minutes? Last year, people were waiting four and a half hours for Zelda. Did you wait that long? Hell no, I had a booking. Right. Okay, my turn. Okay. Question okay. two. Uh, did you find the YouTube community slightly different from last year's bunch? Mm, it's funny because I actually wasn't a YouTuber last year. Like I went as a YouTube uh, person, but I was part of a YouTube, like a, I was part of a community thing with Ubisoft. So I wasn't actually hanging around with other YouTubers. Or sort of, but not really. Oh. So this was actually- I thought sort you were of, around more YouTubers no, last year. No, no. So this was actually the first year I was hanging around with YouTubers proper. As, what did you find? As a YouTuber. And how did you find that? I mean, I think some of them are really great people. I think some of them are not great people. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, funnily enough, like most of them are pretty good. Like, I really feel like, I think you might have the assumption that a lot of YouTubers would be dicks. No, like, some of them are really lovely. Like, I think great. most of them are really lovely, actually. But, and I, but I f sort of feel like we would assume that people that are famous, internet famous or whatever, would also simultaneously have to be kind of jerks in real life. But they're not. They're no, pretty approachable down to we, people. We did speak to a few people that were in the games industry. And oh, yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. were saying things along the lines of, YouTube stars that started channels at 12 years old and now that like a 20 or something or 21, they they can be a, maybe a bit difficult to deal with because yeah. they haven't adjusted. They, they've they just been like famous since, since they were like kids. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, so in that And regard, we're not going to name any names. We're not going to name any names. Because it's rude. But like, yeah, there were definitely some people that we encountered and we're like, 
Yeah. Probably don't want to hang around with you very much. Yeah. So we were lucky because we can just like hang out with each other and we don't really give a shit. Mm. But like, if we were there on our own and we just had to hang out with those people the whole time, I actually think it would have been a shitty week. <laughs> oh, and my question was, who was the biggest dickhead you met during E3? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Ralph. Totally. No, no, who was the biggest dickhead, eh? I don't know if we can like... No. But who was that? Like, come on, I'm trying to think actually who was it. Definitely Paul. No, Jackson. <laughs> Paul was we the, met with this Paul guy. Paul was the Ubisoft guy. He's he was like the, the nice, loveliest he's like dude. the nicest guy in the world. The nicest guy. No one like on the caliber of last year when we met. Yeah. So like la last year when we were at, at PAX, we met this guy and I'm not going to say who he no, is. No, no, no. Yeah. But like he was such a fucking dickhead. So like what he did was he was literally like we were outside having a smoke, right? <laughs> like I don't smoke, my brother Sam does. And, he, and I walked I up to them. I don't smoke, what are you talking about? Anyway, so we were chatting. And then this guy, I walked up to them while they were, three, they were in a conversation. And this guy was like, oi, oi, look at this. Look at this. This is my wife, mate. Yeah. This is who I get to fuck. And yeah. we're like, and there's just this picture of his wife just staying there in like a short dress yeah. or whatever. And we were just like, who says that about their wife? He's like, like yeah, this is my wife. What do you think? She's like, hotter. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? You know, that dude is like a guy in the Australian games industry and he's just the worst. He was like, he's the benchmark of like low scumbags yeah, that we've met in this world. Yeah, it was not great. Anyway, luckily we didn't see him. Actually, we did see him in E3. Oh, we did. We didn't we say did, hi. We, we didn't, didn't say, say hi. We were just like, like, there's that dude. Oh my <laughs> God. God. I hate that guy, you know? It's Walk totally. past him and just like, no, don't break up with me, please. <laughs> Stay with me. No. Here. Okay, what was the takeaway moment from E3 for you? The moment. Take away moment. I mean, Anthem has to be up there. It was. That was the biggest hype thing. But I kind of feel like... Spider-Man? No. I actually feel like the entirety of Ubisoft's conference was the takeaway moment for me. Like, in retrospect now, I feel like I was thinking Sony did a better press, better press conference. But... But having thought about it a lot more, I actually feel like Ubisoft's press conference, start to finish, was just really excellent. There was just a whole lineup of shit that I want to play. Everything this year. that they're bringing out looks really, really good. And I uh, and it felt very innovative and interesting. And I was like, this is what E3 should be about. Yeah. It's not just about like yeah. a lot of them were sequels, but like they weren't just like another thing. They were like, let's really reimagine this sequel. Let's do something That's vastly so true, different. Actually, and then they had like the Mario Rabbids game, which personally was my game of show. So yeah. all of that stuff was just so interesting to see them actually really go out in a limb yeah. and. Do something great. Mario Rose because they're introducing like, like different IP and hopefully open the floodgates. In a different format as well for that yeah. game. Yep. Assassin's Creed with the open world idea. They did a good job with that, I think. Really, yep. really cool. Yep. Um The Crew 2. The Crew 2. Was so much fun. Look, it was so good. I don't actually know what the crew one was like, if I had to be honest. It was boring, generic open world racer. And it didn't have that mechanic, right? No, the no. transformer thing. Okay. You can actually transform your cars in crew. So you drive along the road, press a button, and then you become a plane, you just take off the road. And then yeah. you can be like flying through the air and you can be a boat and just transform into a boat and just crash onto the pavement and then you're yeah. just stuck there like a oh, boat. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And that was actually really cool. It was actually. But um and that, that was another thing, like, that's that's different. I've never totally. seen it. Beyond Good and Evil 2 coming out as yep. well. Yep. Huge. Every, oh, they released some crazy. gameplay, actually. They did release some gameplay for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and is that, does that in another open world? Because he actually brought the camera out and he was, like, showing... I don't know exactly, but I think it will have open world elements. Something like that? Yeah. yeah. I think more and more people are doing that these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> more and more people are doing that these days. <laughs> that whole game thing. Because then, like, oh, my God, open world. I think that's going to be a thing soon. I have a know? feeling that... Grandpa, <laughs> I think Grand Theft Auto are like trying it and now it's kind of working. Now you know why we call this channel oh, Grandpa, Layman Gamer. <laughs> okay, were there any games that you walked away from and said, yes, I have to play this now and you weren't planning on playing it before? And you're like, two. I will absolutely buy, buy this. Oh, I mean, yeah, Crew 2. Crew 2? Crew 2. No, you'll absolutely buy Crew 2. Uh, if it comes out the right price. But wait, it'll come out full price. Then maybe not. <laughs> So uh, there were any other games you were like, I will spend $100 on this Australian $60 Spider-Man 100%. Okay, so you'll definitely buy Spider-Man. This was actually the surprise for me when we saw the trailer and you were like, dude, don't worry about the trailer. Like, you yeah. know, they, they bring up trailers all the time and then the, the gameplay is completely different. When we sat down in this like little room for media and they, sh and they said, oh, we're going to show you some new stuff today. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, cool. They showed us the, the exact same thing. And when I walked out, I was like, well, that really sucked. I thought he was going to show us some new shit. But what Ralph correctly pointed out was, the whole reason for that was to show it's legit. It legit. is actually what you. Put. It's not some. It's not some trailer that doesn't actually match up to the gameplay. The gameplay was exactly what to expect from that trailer. The guy and that was playing it in front of us was like actually he was holding playing it, it, playing he, it. He showed us extra stuff. It wasn't just the trailer. Yeah, he did he show doing. us. He was showing us extra moves and stuff. But I thought it was going to be a continuation from what, like the story. No. But that was the like that was awesome actually, mm. and that was what made me go, okay, this is doesn't matter what what price this is. I'm buying this game. Follow up. Okay, were there any um, games that you played and you were like, there's no fucking way I'm buying this game that was garbage? Oh, what was that one that we played? And um, 
That was a game that we played and we were like, this game sucks on X in, on the Xbox floor. Oh, there were heaps like that. <laughs> the Xbox log floor. One that I haven't played that I looked that I thought looked friggin' terrible was that pirate one. That looked so what? bad. Pi uh, pi um, the rareware one. The the Sea one of that you're all like, yeah. Yeah, Sea of Thieves. Look, Ralph said, you know, previous trailers. I didn't see the previous trailers. Like, looked really promising. But the one that we saw looked boring. It was a terrible so trailer. Boring. Apparently, everyone loves Sea of Thieves. Everyone loves to love Sea of Thieves. Everyone loves to be excited about Sea of Thieves. I'm actually personally looking forward to it because I've seen other trailers that make it look really fun. Sam has only seen the trailer that we saw at E3. Yeah, but you said that too, man. The moment you said that, as fuck. you were like, you know what? Fuck this game. This no, no. Shit. I said that as well. I said, based on that trailer, I would not play that game because it looks really boring. Like, but based on other trailers that I've seen, I'm like, this is a really good, interesting concept that I'm actually looking forward to. It looked boring. Even it like the boring. gun loading three hours later. It was ridiculous. Oh my god. It wasn't a game for us. There's no way. Well, actually, funny enough, it's exactly a game for us because it's mainly co op kind of like oh, funny. You know what, actually? To cut you off, and I don't care if I did. Thank you. The one that we that we saw. A way out. Yes. Yeah. That looks sick. The prison one. That, that looks really good. sick. Yeah, I actually look forward to playing that. That lot. is something I really look forward to playing. That's an Xbox exclusive. Is it? Oh. Exclusive. Remember they were doing that? They were like, exclusive. World premiere. World premiere. Exclusive. 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 Yeah, the exclusives didn't look too great, did they? Um, Apart from so, one okay, wait. Is that, is, is that Sea of Thieves, the game you said to yourself, absolutely no fucking way I'm going to play that game? No way. I'm not playing that game. All right. You, I'm going to save this footage now because Sam and I are going to play Sea of Thieves in the future. So, oh, shit, get wrecked. Too. That's right. All right. And then they're just going to throw a bag of money at me. I'm like, mm, this <laughs> game was fantastic. You should <laughs> all play this game. <clears throat> Is he reading a teleprompter? And <laughs> and enjoyed it. That's right. <laughs> um, I think it's an open world game. I think something I with think the sea. going to be popular. Yes. Yeah, I um, think the whole open world thing, watch out for it. That's right. Watch out for it. Uh, yeah. I also think walking around with a gun and shooting things. Something that like puts you like in that, a, like a, like a street and like, you know, a car. You can steal cars. Yep. If they do that kind of thing. I they mean, would go off. I think, that'd be, I think that'd be pretty cool. We should become game developers because we have yeah. very original like, concepts. Like, name them streets, like uh, Grove Street, like, I don't know, stuff like that. I think this is a good Could idea. Work.